Hello everyone, my name is Kirill. You are on the Audio Advisor channel. Today we will talk about the car brake system and specifically about the brake calipers. Many people think that brake calipers are a relatively simple mechanism and there are no pitfalls here. But in fact, there are interesting processes happening and few people know how it really works. So watch this video and at the end I will ask you a very interesting question. So, what is a brake caliper? Every vehicle braking system has a component called a caliper, which is placed behind each wheel. It's called this way after a caliper, the measuring device, was used in early car brake calipers to make sure everything fit together properly, and the name stuck. In some particular vehicles, especially the old ones, calipers may be replaced with what is called brake drums, but their basic function is similar. So. Back to the principle of operation of disc brakes. Here I have a brake disc. It rotates with the wheel. And in order for the car to slow down and stop, it is necessary to stop this disc. The brake disc stops with the help of friction forces. And it's done by brake pads. Here I have brake pads. And now I will show you how it all works. It all looks something like this. In order to stop a rotating brake disc, you just need to strongly compress the pads and, due to frictional forces, it stops. Now you see that the brake pads are suspended in the air. I support them with my hands. So the brake caliper is designed exactly to hold these brake pads and press them at the right time. According to the principle of operation, there are two types of brake calipers, fixed caliper and floating caliper. In most modern cars, the floating brake calipers are used. Floating calipers are able to move in and out relative to the rotor, and fixed calipers don't move. A floating brake caliper has two main parts. The first one is called the brake carrier. Here it is. Through these holes, with the help of some bolts, this part is rigidly attached to the axle of the car, and it does not rotate, it is fixed like this. And this brake carrier supports the brake pads directly. Now I will put them on. Here is the first brake pad, and here is the second brake pad. So, they are now hanging almost in the air. That's about the way the brake caliper carrier holds the brake pads. So, that sorted out. The brake carrier supports the brake pads. Here we have a brake disc that rotates, but the brake carrier never rotates. That's how it is all assembled. And in order to stop the brake disc, we just need what? That's right, squeeze these pads, press them against each other. For this, there is a second part which is the brake caliper itself. Let's take a closer look at the brake caliper design. Here it is now in my hands. This is how it looks from both sides. It is worth noting that now a brake carrier is also installed here, about which we just were talking about. Here it is as a separate part, yes, but now it is installed on the brake caliper. The most important element of the brake caliper is the piston. Here it is in the center, a polished cylindrical part, and around it there is a black seal. Based on the name piston, it is implied that it can move. And in fact, yes, there is a hole here. Now it is clogged with a yellow cork. Brake fluid is supplied here, and when you press the paddle, pressure is created in the system. This liquid comes here under pressure, there is a chamber inside, and due to this pressure, the piston moves in this axial direction. So it is directly responsible for the compression of our pads. In order for the brake fluid under pressure not to flow out from the piston, this piston is surrounded by black seals. By the way, I have this seal separately. Here is one and here is the second. They are already inside. For clarity, I will now install the brake pad, one which is closer to the piston. I take the pad and install it like this. Yes, it's a little springy. 
And so, now I have installed the brake pad, which is closer to the caliper piston. And now we recall the principle of operation of the entire brake system. When the driver presses the brake pedal, pressure is created inside. The brake fluid under pressure enters this hole, there is a chamber inside, and this pressure pushes our piston. This piston, it moves in the direction of the pad and presses this pad against the brake disc, and the car stops. And so, with the first pad, everything seems to be clear. This pad is pushed by the piston. But how is our second pad pressed? Who pushes it? And how should it be pressed against the brake disc? To understand how the second pad works, you need to understand more about the design of the brake caliper carrier. Let's get back to it. And so, in fact, there are two more moving parts in the brake caliper. They are called brake caliper guide pins or bushings. There is a seal here and they can move like this. Look, first and the second. By the way, that is why the design of such a brake caliper is called floating or sliding, since there are these pins along which the caliper can slide. Now I will show you how they work. Let's see what these pins do in the brake caliper. And so look, here is the carrier, yes, which is installed rigidly, and due to these pins, the caliper can move in this direction. Now I will try to stretch it. For the period of the experiment, I now have to install both of the pads. The inboard pad, now it is, has fallen out from here, I will reinstall it. I installed the inboard pad, that comes in contact with the brake piston, and now I am installing the outboard pad. Now this is how it all looks assembled. It is in this exact space the brake disc is inserted, which then we must compress. And so, look, at the initial moment of time the piston pushes the inboard pad, it comes into contact with the brake disc here and then, due to the mobility of these pins, the caliper itself begins to slide. Now I will demonstrate this something like this. And now this distance is narrowed and the brake pads completely squeeze the brake disc. It is for this purpose that these movable pins were developed. They allow one piston to control two pads. So that's all I wanted to say about the design and operation of the so-called floating brake caliper, which, as I said, is installed on most cars on the market. As I mentioned earlier, there is also a so-called fixed caliper. This caliper does not have these movable pins and it cannot move like that, it is fixed. And in this design, instead of one piston, there are two pistons. They are located on two opposite sides, and each of these pistons act on its own brake pad. It is also worth noting that fixed brake calipers are usually installed on sports cars or premium cars, and also they can have more than just two pistons, they may even be two or three pairs of these brake pistons. Now let's talk a little about the maintenance. It is clear that the brake pads wear out over time and it is necessary to replace them. The procedure for replacing the pads depends on the degree and aggressiveness of their wear, that is, your driving style. It also depends on the brand of the pads themselves. To find out if the pads are worn out, you simply look at the thickness of these brake pads themselves by eye. Or there are special pads that have a wear sensor that will already show you on the dashboard that it is time to change the pads. By the way, if you need to buy new brake pads or any spare parts for the brake caliper, 
whether it's brake discs, carrier, guide pins, these rubber things, etc., be sure to visit the outerostrov.by. The link will be in the description. Further, as you can see, the caliper guide pins have these protective rubber covers, thin boots, which over time can wear out and be torn. Then moisture or sand can get inside. This leads to jamming of the pin. They lose their mobility, and so the brakes start to get little stuck in the applied position, even when the brake pedal is not being applied with one of several of the wheels. The same can happen, and so the caliper piston. This piston also has a dust boot. Here it is separately. It can also wear out over time. Brake fluid can leak out from here. Or simply the piston can jam, and then the brake pads themselves are jammed. Actually, the caliper body or the brake carrier are rarely replaced. Usually people buy the so-called caliper repair kit. There are several types. For example, one repair kit. Here there are all these rubber boots and other seals. Then there are caliper guide pins are sold separately. This is the second kit. They come with a separate lubricant and also these two rubber boots. The piston with its seals is also sold separately. Unfortunately, I don't have it on my desk right now. So, when you go to the service station and they write down or tell you that you need to buy some kind of caliper repair kit and you don't fully understand what exactly, be sure to call our managers at the Outer Ostrov store and they will explain what exactly you need to buy. If to draw a conclusion about the operation and repair, then most of the elements here are repaired by restoring them or buying special repair kits. So, most likely, you will never have to buy caliper as a whole in your life, meaning its entire body or caliper carrier. This is all that I wanted to say about the principle of operation of the brake caliper. And it seems that everything became clear to you, right? But in fact, there is a very interesting moment left, and most do not know how it works. We looked into how the brake pads come together. Pressure is supplied here, and the brake pads successfully squeeze our brake disc. And now the question, how do the brake pads return to their initial position? After all, when we release the brake pedal, the pressure is simply released, but there is no pressure in the piston. So how does the piston return back, and how do the brake pads move apart, and the car stops its braking? If you Google this question, how the pads come apart, and how the piston returns to its starting position, you will see a lot of different answers. There are also a lot of disputes. There are whole forums where people write in thousands of comments how they disagree. I can give you a few suggestions on how this can happen. The first case scenario, it may be a matter of thermal expansion, because when the brake pads work, they warm up, and when we no longer brake, everything cools down and a gap appears. The second case scenario may be related to the operation of the hydraulic system itself. When we release the pedal, the pressure resets and maybe some small spring makes it all come back. By the way, I want to note that there are no springs in the caliper design itself and inside the piston. That is, there are no obvious mechanisms that would return the piston to its original position. With the next suggestive thesis, I can tell you that some people write that the disc actually moves in a way that it does not rotate strictly in a perpendicular plane. But in life, it is a little like this, but it's almost invisible, and this motion is forcing our pads to return to their original position when we have already released the brake pedal. But dispute is open. Write in the comments how the pads actually move apart, why the piston returns to its initial position, and after some time, when I get tired of reading all these comments, I will write the correct answer. In order not to miss this correct answer and to be aware of new releases on our channel, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And all the best to you. See you soon.